That's where I started. I started by skilling up before scaling up. So mm. people look at me in 2022 and 2023 and think, okay, well, he's got a lot of followers. There's, there's, there's gotta be um, a reason how he, he was able to grow that fast. Yes. Cause I had something valuable to give to my audience. Ali, so thank you so much for joining us on here. Um, I've been uh, watching your stuff for a long time. I've seen uh, I've seen you popping up actually even on like radio ads and stuff. <laughs> but um, you know, I want to can can you tell everybody kind of you know how many followers you have on Instagram and just kind of like you know just give them kind of the real backstory about yourself right now before I kind of dig into some of the meat here ask, and ask you some questions. Thanks, Andy. My name is Ali Awad, and I help injured people make a lot of money. I started my practice February 13th, 2017 from the trunk of my car with just my phone. I did not have an office, did not have any employees, did not have any sort of real infrastructure. I didn't even have business cards. And in my first full year of business in 2018, I settled $3.2 million in cases, which was a little over a million in attorney's fees, all from social media. Um, and over the years, I've developed a system where I realized here's the type of video that you need to create to grab people's attention. What are the types of metrics you need to keep track of? And although the vanity metrics are cool with having a couple million followers on various platforms, what really matters is that I have a $25 million a year law firm and that it's growing consistently year after year and that we've used social media as a way to catapult our success and catapult our growth. So um, there's, there's people that have way more followers than me, people that get way more views, way more engagement, way more everything. But I think lawyers should be focused on impacting the community. And you do that by handling more clients, handling more cases and bringing in more revenue. And so um, even though our Instagram and Facebook and TikTok and Snapchat all have tons of followers, I think the, the thing that people should pay attention to is how does it translate into clients? How do we convert views to clients? How do we get engagement to clients? And how do we fulfill on the back end to provide an excellent service? So today I want to make sure that we go into the meat and bones. You know, there's so many different strategies and so much misinformation out there about social media. So I'd like to dispel those myths. And, you know, the feeling is mutual, Andy. I got, I hold a ton of respect for you. I know you're kind of a, a titan of industry and personal injury. So I'm glad we were able to connect today and let's get the show rolling. I'm excited. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, the first thing I always ask everybody is like, what, what, what made you get started in social media? Cause everybody can hear, you know, millions of followers and all that type of stuff. But at, at one point you created a brand new Instagram account and you had zero followers, right? So what actually, what was your motivation? Like, what was the problem that you had that actually caused you to want to start doing social media? Yeah, the problem was my bank account was too yeah. small. <laughs> was, yeah, there you go. No, I mean, look, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was flat broke and I needed to make money. Mm. And I couldn't afford to compete with billboards and radio and TV ads and every other huge player in the industry. What I did have was my phone and what I did have was social media. So yeah, I, I don't hide from the fact that I needed to make money. I was tired of being $200,000 in debt. I was tired of driving a shitty car. I was tired of living in an apartment, paying 300 bucks a month in rent with a roommate at, with a doctorate in law and a master's in business. I was tired of having so many failed businesses. I was tired of not being able to give my mom and my dad, put them on payroll and be able to give them the life that they deserve. I was tired. And I knew that the only way that it would make sense was to find first an industry that had a very high ceiling. So I came from the background of car audio and wheels. I did a lot of online businesses and online sales before I became an attorney. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a lot of experience with online, with content marketing, with you know creating eBay stores and Shopify stores and things like that. So I realized I could use that knowledge to translate into the PI business, into the legal industry. What I found was that most lawyers were not hungry. What I found was most lawyers are not good businessmen. Mm -hmm. Most lawyers have no idea how to do sales. Um, there are a lot of strong marketers, but the marketers are usually not good lawyers and the great lawyers are usually not good marketers. They just talk trash about each other. <laughs> so first I built up my skill set. I became a an expert personal injury lawyer. And you do that by handling a ton of cases. So I took a job out of law school, making 40 grand a year as an attorney. And during the, and I stayed there for 14 months. During that time, I learned how to handle cases from start to finish. 
I was marketing myself online. I brought in more cases than anyone else in the firm. And I realized after I did the numbers of the, just the cases that I brought in on my own compared to the attorney's fees that I brought in, how much I was making myself, I could just do this on my own and get paid a whole lot more. Um, so that's how, that's where I started. I started by scaling up before scaling up. So mm. people look at me in 2022 and 2023 and think, okay, well, he's got a lot of followers. There's, there's, there's gotta be um, a reason how he, he was able to grow that fast. Yes. Cause I had something valuable to give to my audience. Right. And got I was it. early. Awesome. So, awesome. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I had to cut you off. <laughs> no, no. It, and that's, that's all it was, was I, I was early. So I, I learned how to become a great personal injury lawyer. And then I started giving that information to people on social media. It actually started in law school on Snapchat. Yeah. I, in 2012 is when I started doing social media heavily. Mm -hmm. And when I got my first catastrophic injury case from Snapchat, uh, I realized it was time to really spend some money. In fact, um, the huge pivotal moment in my career was when I boosted a video in like 2017. Mm. Uh, I spent $20 boosting it from my phone on Instagram. It was a video about punitive damages. Yep. And it just said, if you get hit by a drunk driver, do not settle your case unless you know this. Boom, boom, boom. And I explained how punitive damages apply in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I boosted it for $20. I got eight cases from it. So oh, <laughs> talk about a $2.50 cost of client acquisition. And it was like, uh, it, obviously it was, it was a, a winner. Um, you know, you don't get, get so many of those, but it made me yeah. realize the power of social media. And from then on, I've built an entire media company and media team around it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, you started and you didn't have any money and you just started posting and you started on Snapchat, right? So you kind of got first mover advantage there. But like, what was it like in the early days? How much did you actually have to create? Because I know there's a lot of people that are thinking, yeah, it's great, but he's got 2 million followers. You know, that's why it works for him, but he's got 2 million followers. Well, you didn't always have 2 million followers. So what was it like? What was it like early in the beginning while you were starting to build your platform up? And how did you do that? So Andy, that's a really good question. And I, I would like to point everyone's attention, not to the CEO lawyer brand, but to the 706 Abogado brand, where I currently have like 600 followers on my Spanish channel. I'd like to point people to the CEO lawyer Academy, where I only have 2000 followers on TikTok. I'm still a practitioner of this to this in this very day at this very moment. Mm -hmm. So the, the most important thing that I think people should realize when they're getting into social media is understanding why social media algorithms work a certain way. Yeah. Right now, there's obviously a tremendous opportunity on TikTok because you can't get a million views organically on Instagram. It's just so, so, so rare. But mm -hmm. on TikTok, it happens all the time. Right. And why, why is that happening on TikTok? Because TikTok wanted to become the number one video streaming platform in the world. And they did. Well, yeah. who... Which company saw that as a huge disadvantage? It was Google and YouTube. YouTube saw that, well, we need to create a vertical version of our platform. So they created YouTube Shorts. And now YouTube is promoting the crap out of these YouTube Shorts. And you can get so much more view time and so much more exposure with very little effort. Mm -hmm. And now Instagram is doing the same thing. Yep. Instagram has been pushing reels for a long time. They just announced in the past month all videos are considered reels now. They stopped doing long form video. They don't want to compete in that space. Facebook has reels now. So yeah. understanding where your effort is best spent. I don't spend as much effort on Snapchat anymore yeah. because it just doesn't work for my brand. Mm -hmm. I still do Instagram because it's strong for me, but right now TikTok and YouTube shorts are where, you know, where the attention's at. So in telling, in teaching you on how I'm starting my new brands right now, mm -hmm. it's, creating a vertical video that I can post on all these different pl platforms simultaneously. And then whichever ones work very well, I'll boost it and throw a little bit of money at it. That's it. Yeah. And so you shouldn't think about being omnipresent on all the channels. If I was gonna tell you where to spend your money right now and all your energy, it would be on TikTok.